Okay, you know, let me do a little talking on this video. So, I'm talking about the song I wrote called The Legend of Bowworthy McSquire or The Ballad of Bowworthy McSquire. It's a folk legend character that I made up. Bowworthy McSquire. I remember in high school I first was starting to songwrite, and you know, when you first start songwriting, you don't really know what to, song, to write about because you want to write a song. You, wanna, you love songs, so you go, I want a song. Like, okay. So, I mean, I playing guitar for a couple of years at that point. Started in eighth grade and then I didn't really start I started writing lyrics soon after that. But then I still learned my guitar so I was I was like, okay I'm gonna write some lyrics and I'll eventually I'll put some music on it. <laughs> so that was my mentality. And then freshman year I was so busy with school that I didn't I was like, oh I just couldn't didn't have time to put music on the lyrics. But I was writing lyrics, you know, in school classes, you know, and I was like, okay, I'll put music on there eventually, you know, I'll put some music on there, I'll put some more on there, so they were adding up, you know, and then, finally, about a couple years later, I, uh, you know, I uh, met this guy named Brennan, and then one of my, one of my classes, uh, what was that, American, Lit yeah, American Literature class, and uh, you know, he was into the Beatles, so and I was in the Beatles, so we went, hey, we both the Beatles, we both play instruments, let's hang, let's get together and jam. So he's like, come over to my house. And so I went up to his house, and then we kind of jammed, and I saw he had a four track, and then he was like recording Beatles covers. And I was like, hey, do you mind if I use that and record some of my own songs? Because I've been writing songs for a few years. And he's like, oh, okay. So he was like, yeah, okay. And then I was encouraging him to start to write out his own songs, and so he started writing his own songs. Which is cool because he's like a very good musician, so he could do that. You know, he actually could make up you know, stuff, and he, he did. So I was like, yeah. So I started. Then I started writing some more songs, and then one of the first songs I started writing went after. And then the song was that that I wrote. You know, I wrote the lyrics in school, and then I wrote the music down my house after I the car. It was a real song, and I was like, I was telling you know, and I told him, like, yeah, I'm trying to write a folk character. I'm trying to make it up. Folk character. So I wrote the story with this guy named Bowen and Squire, and like it's like, it's like a legend tells that he did. So it was like a legendary kind of character in the folk, you know, folk legend or whatever. You know. And so I was like thinking, yeah, maybe I'll make up some more characters like like that. But I thought, but then it got kind of, I don't know, I didn't want to keep, you know, because it just seemed like it was a little repeating myself. I don't like to repeat myself. Like, you know, I was like, this is cool, let's do the little folk character. And then there was some other kind of song. So I was like, I don't like to just do the same thing. You know, it gets boring and just kind of do the same kind of thing. But, you know, eventually I thought, I, maybe I'll eventually come back and do some more of those kind of characters. And this was like 1992, mind you, when I wrote the song. So so I remember writing the, the lyrics in school and then I was all excited. I was like, oh man, I wrote the song. And I told Brendan, we got to record it. <laughs> so we put it on a four track and it was like, yeah, so it was like on track one, it was him playing drums, me playing acoustic guitar. And track two, I think I played bass, and he did some percussion or something. And then track three was me singing lead. I actually sang lead while on track one while I was playing the thing, and then I overdubbed another the, the vocal. And ran my vocal through a chorus button, my, my guitar's chorus, my chorus, my boss chorus button. And I was it, and it gave this weird effect, like a kind of eerie effect, which is cool. And then um, track four, I played some lead. It's this very distorted electric guitar, like prang, and then then prang, and I kind of really overloaded the the recording thing, and I gave it this, this natural distortion. And I remember that you know, I put bass. I played the bass on on Brennan's. Um, he had this acoustic bass, electric acoustic bass, you know, the acoustic, you know, like acoustic that guitar, but you plug it in, so, you know, it's pretty good, it was a nice bass. So, you know, and then the bass, I was like, you know, you know, when I was sitting here, thinking, my friend, would you really get that feeling? Yeah, I don't know. And then we had this kind of, uh, kind of, kind of very eerie kind of thing. 
Yeah, so we so we so we so we put it down. So you know, let me play the song for you now. You know what I mean? Originally, when we were recording it, I was like, we should be, we should have the intro. I'm like, and he was on drums. So it was like track one. And it's usually when I come up with the intro. When I write the intro, it's like right when I'm about to record it. You know, it's like this needs an intro, better intro. And I usually make it up on the spot. That's usually how I come up with it. I've done that a number of times, like on a song called Face Value. You know, I came up with this. It was just kind of went into the song, you know. But then I thought, we can't just go right into the boom, do How about an intro? So I was like, okay. You know, I was like, yeah, so that's my life. So this song, that was another song I wrote, one of the first songs I wrote. I've been recorded, we just did it on four tracks. That's well, a song called Face Value. Now this song on Worthy Mix Choir. Yeah. So originally I was like, yeah, come up with a doo. So he came up with this doo, 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 doo. Little did I know that I was actually the, the beginning to surrender to the, the bass, the, the same drum. I had never heard the cheap sticks. Uh, the cheap stick. Cheap, cheap trick? Cheap trick? Cheap trick. Man, the tongue twister. Cheap trick song, uh, Surrender, at, at that point. So I didn't know about the, the little intro, the doo, 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 doo. So I had a brain came He's like, yeah, I didn't know. I mean, we could have changed it if I knew, if I knew that was, you know, the, the drum opening to surrender. But I didn't know if Brennan knew that was a drum trick. I was like, just come up with a little fill and then we go right into the, to the song and he's like, doof. And I thought the acoustic was a nice little bit, because the acoustic can be a very kind of interesting kind of rhythm thing, you know. You don't have to have electric rhythm, I mean, you know, like a little bit of John, I use a lot of rhythm, acoustic rhythm on like wheels for sale, you know, and it, and it works, you know, you don't have to have that electric sound. Because it sounds really, 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 really good on rhythm, you know, it really good rhythm sound, especially when, you know, so, so yeah. So let me play the song. So I'll do it like the way we originally did it with the little drum intro. It goes, it goes. So yeah, Thank you. 
wrote it first back then. You know, I was like, yeah, I played I played guitar for a few years, and I wasn't really intent on playing. I wasn't like intently learning, like you know, you know, just, you know it's like once you get it, get it down, and you just learn chords basically, and you learn melodies, and that's it. You play the melodies, you sing the melodies, you make melodies on the guitar, and that's it. It's like not really like you. Be, I think you become you become better with the fingering and stuff. You, you know, once you play guitar, that's you got, Basically, your guitar level. You don't really, I think you don't really get become a better guitar player. Maybe you know, I think better with the movie, you know. So, because uh, I'm basically the same <laughs> skilled guitar player that I was in in high school. So you want to know how I played in high school? That's basically the same. I mean, I can mean, play songs, you know. I can write songs, you know. I can do it. Yeah, but I become a better songwriter. I mean, I learned to access my creativity, creativity better. Really. The more you do it, the better you, you know. Kind of easy, kind of get more into easy and understand how to access that creative side of you easier. So, yeah, you yeah, know, so yeah, and also to constructing songs, you know, you're better at that too. You know, how you do it, it comes with, with you know, doing it <laughs> basically. So, I remember with this song, you know, I kind of had an idea, of, I wanted to be kind of an eerie kind of song about Bone Murder Square dying in a flame, and I thought that's. This character, like, I just, it does kind of flame and flame. I thought I just kind of put that together. <laughs> just kind of just, no one wants to play, he, <laughs> he melted in a flame. <laughs> it's just kind of just like, you know, so I put a lot of, <laughs> and then I put a lot of minor chords in it. There's a lot of minor, you know, it's like, you got know, like B minor, and you got. It's a D minor and E minor and minor minor so it's like you know C minor and so yeah but yes yeah um, yeah the word yeah you know, this, that was, this is the word that came to me I'm sitting here thinking my friend would you really be there for me in the end if something happened to me would you cry I don't know why I always thought about that like friendship it's empty and losing that are you gonna cry you know, it's like you punch something and you're gonna cry. <laughs> you slap me like that. That's kind of funny thing. So I think that's why I did it. wrote that lyric because I thought that, that was kind of like my head and my. And then it was like, I thought, yeah, yeah. So I was kind of worse and then go right into the chorus now. Oh, it makes my die. No, nobody wants to blame. You melted in a flame. Nobody. One really broken eye. I don't know why. I brought one really broken eye. This broken eye. It's just kinda of, yeah, it's just kinda of, okay, it's just kinda of make sense. Maybe it doesn't have to make sense, it's kinda of, people wonder. Yeah. The world couldn't cry. Why is it I ain't cry? Okay, one with really a broken eye, the world couldn't cry, nobody was to blame, he melted in a flame. <laughs> and then this, the next verse is Isn't it a pity my friend? If it's a friendship we couldn't mend and the same thing happened to you, would I cry? If you had melted in a flame, would I find the one that's to blame? If you had melted in a flame, I think it's trying to be poetic. Too. And then the next verse is, Now being here, what's left, my friend? What's left to you that they can send? What's the one thing that they knew that helped you get by? And if you had melted in a flame, would I find the one that's to blame? If you had melted in a flame. And then it's like, When would the squire die? Everybody was to blame. Melted in a flame, bone worthy, broken eye. The world couldn't cry, nobody was to blame. He melted in a flame. Yeah, you're trying to be like Edgar Allan Poe or something. <laughs> I think that's because I love Poe, so it's like, uh, oh, so you know, like poetry, that's, 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 that's the guy. But, you know, right. So maybe I think I was trying to write an Edgar Allan Poe poem with the music. So that's about all I can say about the legend of Bone with Mixed Point. And also I also had the legend of Sleepy Hollow in mind, so that was also kind of the, the kind of influence. The legend of Sleepy Hollow and, you know, the legend of Bone with Mixed Point. So I think that's where I got the whole... I think I was thinking about that story too when I wrote this, so that was kind of an influence too. But that was basically it. Thank you for listening. I know I'm talking a little fast and I hate doing these kind of videos, but... <laughs> It's like playing the songs and talking about it. I don't mind talking about my songs, but it's like I'm actually just talking to myself right now. I don't know anybody listening to this. I don't know. 
I write very good songs regardless, but still, you know, people don't really want to listen to good things. They would rather listen to people suck and poop and gravitate towards politicians and bad people and people who do bad things and people who suck. You know, they don't go on and on and on about people that they hate all the time. I don't know why. One thing is focus on things that they love and people they love and people who do good things and nice things and creative things and talented things. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for listening.